and outside the box reviews we are doing a state of the collection update it's an update i usually try to do twice a year and i missed the second one last year and i'm a little late with this year's but finally doing one part of the reason why i was kind of hesitant on doing this is because well it's always kind of hard because there's constantly new stuff coming out or new stuff i'm adding and i always kind of want to just have the most complete version and even doing this one i'm like well i've got a couple things coming monday and i got other stuff coming in but you know, if I don't actually go ahead and do it, I'm never actually going to. I'm going to keep putting it off. So this is a snapshot of what my collection looks like right now. Up here, way up high on the top shelf, we've got kind of a miscellaneous horror shelf, one of a few. Way back here, I've got some music figures. I've got Alice Cooper, a couple NECA Eddies from Iron Maiden, and a custom Eddie I made. Then up front, we got Killer Clowns from Muck Time, Machete. Actually, two machetes, two characters named Machete. We got Danny Trejo and Tom Savini. Day of the Dead, Dr. Tongue. Return of the Living Dead, Tar Man. Another custom, this is my custom Cropsy from The Burning. Another custom zombie back there is my Beach Bum Zombie. A few different Leslie Vernons, the two in back are customs. The one up front is the official release. And then I got Bubba Hotep kind of stuck back in there. Ghostface from NECA. I do need to get the other version of this. Clean mask and the newer release with the kind of plastic bottom robe because this cloth one I think is really ugly. Over here we got the whole Army of Darkness set up. We've got a couple different ashes from Evil Dead 2. Henrietta, Hero Ash, and then I guess Army of Darkness is really back here. But the McFarlane Evil Ash, the McFarlane Ash, and then the NECA one in between with the extended out messed up jaw. Next shelf down, we're getting to the Predator section. So I've got all the Dutches lined up here. Still one of the coolest little mini lines that NECA's ever given us, all the Dutches within the Predator line. I've said it in those reviews, I'm glad they stopped because we don't need any more of these. Maybe the arm wrestling Dutch, but that's about it. But still a very cool section of my collection. And we got the Predators from the first movie. This is the Comic-Con exclusive Gort mask that wasn't actually in the movie, but it was the concept. And we've got all the ones that actually appear in the movie. We got masked, unmasked, bloody, not bloody. That guy's missing an arm because he fell. <laughs> Got the completely clear one back there, and the water emergence, which I still think is one of the coolest looking Predators NECA's ever done. Coming down another shelf, we have the Predator 2 area. We've got the trophy wall, complete with the City Hunter, masked, unmasked, and the battle damage here dead on the ground. We have the whole Lost Tribe on this kind of tier system here, which I need to get a better version of. We got a couple also off to the sides there. The old Elder chilling back there, because the new one is up front here. And then the comic version. Version Predators. You got the Enforcer, the Bad Blood, and the Ahab up here. I love that Ahab Predator. Great exclusive. And even more Predators. Literally Predators from the movie Predators. We've got all the Predators from that film. The Tracker, the Falconer, a few different Berserkers, the Classic. And then we have the semi-cloaked versions back here. Also the dog, can't forget that dog. In the back we got AVP, we got the McFarland Celtic, which the AVP will probably be moving more front and center when NECA's figures come out. The Cloaked Berserker is back there. We also have the AVPR Wolf Predators, two different versions. Then over here, we've got, well I threw in the Masked, I also want to call it the Borg Predator, I also forget the official NECA name for it, but I threw him in back here because I felt he mixed in well with the kind of dead end Predators and stuff like that so you got the whole dead end tribe going on here and the kenner tributes over here you got a whole nother three of those coming out soon another miscellaneous horror shelf we got the kind of halloween section so we got sam from trick or treat and then actually halloween we got the michael myers figures over here which i really wish neko was able to get those rights back but it sounds like the akads aren't really cooperating which sucks that dog soldier figure, great flea market find there for me. We got Chucky, and one of the things coming in next week, there is another Chucky figure, the McFarlane one, coming in. I'm really excited to get that and do a comparison. Texas Chainsaw section, another section I need to kind of build out. There's a couple more figures, one from NECA from the beginning, and two others from Mezco that I'm missing to kind of round this out. And of course, the ultimate Leatherface from NECA coming later this year, but I do love my Texas Chainsaw figures. Then we go to Hellraiser, we got skinless julia a couple different chatterers with chatter beast pinhead the female and butterball we've got the pillar of souls was it the leviathan i think was what that was the 
big spiky version of the Lament configuration. Really like these figures. I don't have too much desire to pick up any more of them besides maybe the Frank and the Trinard, which are pretty hard to come by, but I really like this line. Coming down a level, we have, I call this my 80s action shelf, even though it's not all 80s. So you got Terminator starting from T1, got some endoskeletons in back, including the T1 from Playmates, which is a piece of crap. And speaking of pieces of crap, the TX from Terminator 3. We're going into T2, and all the different T1000s, almost all of them, I think. And then this McFarlane T3 figure. I don't think I reviewed the TX, and obviously I haven't reviewed this T3 Arnold. I might save those for when Genesis is about to come out and kind of tie these reviews in. And I got the Keaton Batman, a little out of place on this shelf, but I didn't have anywhere really better to put him. Rambo chilling back there. And some RoboCop figures, the really awesome Ed 209. Beat him versions of RoboCop, including the jetpack, which I do intend to eventually have hanging, so he looks like he's flying, but haven't gotten there yet. Going back up to the top, on the other side, we have a shelf completely dedicated to aliens. So here we have the NECA Queen. Bunch of different Xenomorphs. This is the newer version. The two battle damage are newer. And the older Xenomorph warrior back there. Then I've got all my marines. I have two different versions of Hudson. I got Windrix and I have three different Hicks in there. Now if you notice Hudson here is missing his lower plate. I actually removed his armor for a photo I was taking and I might end up customizing him up to be a more casual marine. Maybe use this head instead of the screaming version but we'll see. Then the McFarlane Queen back there and of course Bishop here on the end. Next shelf down continuing on with the Alien franchise we got Prometheus. We got David a couple engineers and the trilobite, all the cool accessories that came with Deacon, and then the Deacon itself, very cool looking, the suited engineer, which of course I had to put right next to Kane from Alien because I feel like these fit together very well. Two different versions of the big chap, the older NECA and the newer, got the dog alien here, and the McFarlane Resurrection, which I can't wait for an update on. Coming down, we've got some universal horror, so we have my little Frankenstein corner over here, Son of Frankenstein, Igor, Frankenstein's monster, Bride of Frankenstein, and just because Boris Karloff's very heavily represented over here. I've got the mummy back there. Another Boris Karloff from Abbott and Costello meet Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I love this set with the chemistry set and all that. And then the Mezco Silent Screamer is not a universal monster, but this is the Edison Frankenstein, even though it looks very little like the creature from that film. But it's a really big set and the cool backdrop it came with. You have the Invisible Man. You have two Lon Chaney seniors. We have Hunchback and Phantom of the Opera. A couple Wolfmen, Lon Chaney Jr. on one side, Benicio Del Toro, of course, on the other. We've got Van Helsing. A couple Creature from the Black Lagoons. And Dracula back there. Coming down another rung, we've got the Pacific Rim Jaeger shelf. So we got Romeo Blue, Tacit Ronin, Coyote Tango, Cherno Alpha, four different Gypsy Dangers, Crimson Typhoon on his weak leg joints looking like he's about to fall off the shelf and coyote tango then down to the kaiju we have the concept axe head trespasser three different knife heads we got otachi there with her baby leatherback and scunner so these are all kind of in chronological order of how they appear in the film and bottom shelf on this side, we have some of the lower end Godzilla figures. Uh, it's kind of a miscellaneous kaiju shelf. So we have Creations 54. We also have the Microman 54, Bandai Japan and Giris. Creation, I think that was late 60s Godzilla. Hedorah in the background. Bandai Japan Jet Jaguar. We have the Japanese and American release of King Caesar. It's actually one of the few cases where I think I might actually prefer the American version, which is why I haven't just replaced it like I have some of the others. Like, I do of the Destroyer and the Burning Godzilla, but those got taken off the shelf when I got the Monster Arts. But I like these two guys kind of equally for different reasons, sadly enough. At the Creations Mecha Godzilla from the 70s, Bandai Japan Gamera from Gamera 3, Rainbow Mothra from Creations, the GMK and Final Wars Creations Godzilla, then some other Bandai Creations, Final Wars, and GMK stuff. We got Ghidorah back there, Rodan, and Giris, the NECA Godzilla 2014, and then the Bandai Japan Mudo figure, which I just got in. And then down here across the bottom, it's where I kind of cheat on being outside the box reviews. I mean, the figure are outside the box but while I normally throw every last scrap of packaging away these things were just too cool not to keep plus these are the boxes for the monster arts and my 1x plus 
And I also keep my Hot Toys boxes, just these higher end figures. It's always good to have in case, you know, you move or something. It's a really good, safe way to contain these figures that are a little pricier and command some higher secondary market prices. So definitely want to keep them nice and safe. And I saw Rich Iso do this with his X Plux boxes mostly. I think he did with his Monster Arts as well. And I thought it kind of had a good look to it, so I mimicked it. Speaking of Kaiju, on top of my Detolfs over here, I've got a few other ones. These are some Trend Masters figures. The Godzilla 2008 back there, the Mecha Godzilla, Mothra, will play set, the Supercharged Godzilla. Then we've got the Bandai Japan Theater exclusive GMK figure, really nice looking figure. And then over here, the X Plus Varan. I got a great deal on this guy and can't wait to review him. Very cool looking figure. And coming down here, we have my Detail full of Monster Arts figures and highly articulated Kaiju. And I got some new diode lights for him that I just wanted to show off here. Now, they're not quite changing in sync, but they have a huge array of different colors they could cycle through, or you could set them to stay at a certain color. So, really cool little addition to my collection. We're just going to pop the door open so we get a little less glare here. Top shelf here, we've got some Heisei-era villains. We've got Space Godzilla and King Ghidorah. I actually had my new Gigan up here, and I think I've put him in the other room <laughs> and forgot to put him back in the shelf, but not a big deal. Next shelf down, some more Heisei Godzilla. We've got the NECA this is actually the rebirth version, but he's standing in for a 94. And then we've got Little Godzilla. Some of the buildings that came with Mogira. Some aircraft back there. Down here, we've got my flying kaiju shelf. We've got Rodan way up there. Mothra and Batra. And then their larval forms down below. I have my 94 Godzilla down here as well. I'm not really sure what to do with him because I actually think I like the birth version a little bit more. I try to find some way to incorporate him on display with his swimming mode because it's the one thing he can do that the other version version can't. And down here I've got my mechs, I've got Mogira, then I have the three different versions of Mecha Godzilla. Heisei version up front, and the two Millenniums on the side. Mecha King Ghidorah is supposed to be heading out my way soon, so he'll get added to this shelf. Here on the other side, we've got Biolante, which I absolutely love. Can't wait to review her, too. It was a hard road to get this figure, but she is well worth it. And then we got some non Heisei Godzilla going on here. We've got the 64 back there, the Millennium, and the 2014. And this shelf I really like. It's a whole shelf dedicated to Godzilla versus Destroya, so we've got Destroya back there there all the different forms of flying form the land aggregate form we have the super x3 and the helicopter there is godzilla jr and burning godzilla being attacked by the crab form and the two little freezer maser tanks down there so the only thing missing from this is the birth version but i kind of feel like i don't know it doesn't fit in here quite as well as i'd want it to having two different juniors i'm not sure he might get at it he might not and then down here is kind of a miscellaneous shelf. I've got King Kong, and I've got the Revel Tech, Rodan, and Baragon. The Monster Arts Gamera is going to be added to this shelf probably on Monday. And here on another wall, I have more horror figures. This bottom shelf is dedicated to Jason. I did just incorporate the retro figures in here. I'm going to collect the retro Jasons and probably forget the rest of that line. But we do have the Part 2, both in retro and normal plastic. Part 3 from NECA and Mezco. And then I've got the video game version retro back there because he's the same body. A couple Part 4s from Mezco and NECA. My custom Part 5 with the retro Part 5 behind him. Part 6 from Mezco, it's going to be getting a retro to go with it. Part 7 from NECA, the early gigantic Jason, which I hope they redo eventually. Mezco Jason goes to hell. And this bottle of toxic waste here, I've got the head for my custom part 8, and I still need to finish that years later. Jason X from McFarlane, Freddy vs. Jason from NECA, and the Mezco and NECA remake versions. And of course, they all have accessories and bloody parts down here at the bottom. And my shelves are dusty as hell, so don't judge me. And up here with Freddy Krueger, I guess another place where I break my rule, I did keep that Ultimate figure box, just because it's a great movie poster. But I have two different versions of Part 1 Freddy there. Part 2, you got Part 3 from both NECA and Mezco. Some Part 4. Just the whole bunch. Everything except for Freddy vs. Jason represented on the shelf. I do need to get that NECA Freddy vs. Jason, but I was really hoping they would redo it. And then here at the end, we have the Furnace with the Ultimate Freddy and his stuff and somebody else making a little cameo up top. Then up here, I decided to do some kind of movie maniacs figures that don't really have a series. And there went that. Yep, see, told you it was gonna fall. And up here I have some McFarlane Movie Maniacs. I don't really go with any other series, so I kind of decided to put them up here with their backdrops. Ironically, 
having just said that I don't display them with these. I got Norman Bates from Psycho. I got Pumpkinhead, whose hand did break off while reviewing him. I forgot to put that blooper in there. Well, that's not good. Got the Thing, the two different versions. I actually have a space open there because I'm getting the other version next week. A Candyman, and just because they had no better place to go, there's my Castle Freak. Over here, I've got my Mini Mates of Universal Horror, so the black and white ones up here, and the color ones underneath. Then I do have some Gremlins kind of hiding all over the room. I've got this guy hanging by the window. Got the Electric Gremlin coming out of my light socket. Phantom Gremlin hiding up there on top of my zombie survival kit, along with some programs from some horror conventions I've been to. And out here in the living room, I have my Detolf with one six scale figures in it. Of course, I got the Lament configuration up top. Got my DX Terminator fighting the T-1000, the exclusive sideshow head on there. Just absolutely love this. Probably one of my favorite figures in my whole collection. And I got the Battle Damage T-800 from T-1. Looking badass in here. Got some Freddy's, the sideshow Freddy back in the back. I got my custom Freddy vs. Jason Freddy that looks horrible, but it does have a base signed by Robert England, and then my custom Michael Myers figure. Down here at the bottom, I've got the Mezco Part 7 Jason in back, the Sideshow Jason Goes to Hell, and my custom Part 4 Jason. And not that it's an action figure or anything, but back here I do have a really cool poster I like. Actually, it's four posters in one. This is all basically my tribute to Legendary Pictures Kaiju, the two Godzilla 2014 posters, and two Pacific Rim posters. These are all theater exclusive, actually three are theater exclusive, and then that top right Godzilla one was the Comic-Con exclusive. But I think it makes a pretty nice little art piece here. Also on top of my speakers here in back, I've got my Evil Dead Necronomicon books. Actually the DVD, and this one is for part two. Then up here I've got part one. Out here on the Entertainment Center, I've got Ghost Face Mask, my little custom Hills Run Red baby face, Mighty Mug, and the Diamond Godzilla Bank. Over on the other side, I've got my Michael Myers Halloween 2 mask, Gizmo, and Creature from the Black Lagoon bust bank. In the middle here, even though there's too much glare, these are all my horror autographs up here on the wall. So I got Tony Todd, Daniel Harris, Haru Nakajima, Gunnar Hansen, Ted White, Akira Takarada, Danny Trejo, Kane Hodder, Derek Mears, Doug Bradley, Bill Mosley, and Rico Browning. And... Sadly enough, over here on the shelf, I still haven't gotten these completely set away. I've got R.E. Lehman, the original first Jason. This is actually bigger than an 8x10, so I'm actually going to have to cut down the picture a little bit to get it to match with the rest of these, which is kind of a bummer. I've got another Rico Browning because the first one my friend actually grabbed for me, and this one I was actually able to get myself, so this is one I actually got to meet the guy with. And then I've got... Ken Kersinger, who played Jason in Freddy vs. Jason. So this one's all ready to go up there on the wall. I just need to redo all these. Not exactly action figure collectibles, but here I've got all of my DVDs. These are all my horror movies on this side. So quite an extensive bit here. Uh, anybody who's more interested in getting a closer look, I could do a full video on that, I guess. This other side starts off with all kaiju movies up top, then moves on to just kind of general movies, mostly action and sci-fi stuff. Then I got heavy metal concert DVDs and some TV shows down there. Up on top of my fridge, I have the freaking huge Jack Pacific Godzilla, just because that's where he kind of fit best and was most out of the way. There's kind of a little alcove over here. I've got my Jason masks. I've got the two NECA ones, the Freddy vs. Jason in the part four, and then I've got the fiberglass mask part six. And I've got some gargoyles and Freddy Krueger gloves. These are all NECA replicas down here of the gloves, which are pretty freaking cool. This isn't how I ultimately want to display these. I definitely want to find a better way to display them. I was even thinking about taking those one-sixth Freddies out of the Detolf and putting these in instead. And same with the hockey masks. But I'm not completely sure yet. I also thought a shadow box could be kind of cool for them. And then one last little setup here. This is a new shelf I just recently put together. I used to have my Ninja Turtles in the other room, but I've moved them all in here now. So on the very top, I've got the turtle van. And I forgot to reset Michelangelo in that, apparently, so he's all knocked over. Leo and Splinter on the roof. We've got Raph on the little ejector seat. And Don is driving. Next level down, we got the villains. So we got Krang, Bebop, Rocksteady, Foot Soldier, and Shredder. Now all these figures, some are re-releases, some are vintage. They're all kind of a mishmash. I'm not really super concerned about having 
vintage ones per se. I'm just interested in having a representation of the figure. Down here we've got the Ninja Turtle classics, the cartoon versions. And the next step down with Bebop and Rocksteady, and then my bootleg Leonardo comic version based on the NECA figure. The movie Turtles. And pretty much empty shelf down here. I've got that stupid movie Raph that I liked because he looked like Raph from the first movie with the trench coat and the hat. And I'll probably put my few cartoon series Ninja Turtles down here. I just haven't migrated them over yet. So that's it. That's the current state of my collection. A lot of stuff always growing and changing. Some stuff that's not even displayed up here yet and... It's either going to go away or I'm going to find a home for it at some point. But definitely a lot going on with this collection. So now that you've seen the updated version of everything, let me know. Is there anything I haven't reviewed that you want to see a review on? Or maybe something that I reviewed a while ago that needs an update, a little better quality review. Because I know some of my older ones are pretty rough. If you saw anything you want to see again, let me know and I'll think about it. And as always, you can follow me on Instagram, username Outside the Box Reviews. And this Facebook link, all of a sudden the description on there. We'll catch you guys later with some more reviews. Bye.